uh, in the day. They got several of them from several different people, a high-rise building in downtown L.A., uh, the concern being that uh, it appeared these people were checking out the building, taking potentially taking pictures of it, walking around the building, and trying to get in the building. This is L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti. Some folks who tried to gain entry and were denied that entry, um, but seeing whether there's any links uh, to the shooters in San Bernardino and the events that happened. They don't know if there are any links, but the FBI is taking this very seriously as it tries to figure out uh, if the attackers were scouting out other locations. We know they had a lot more bombs, they had a lot more ammo, uh, and the question is, were they planning on attacking some other location? And FBI agents believe they probably were. They don't know what that location was. Was this high-rise one of those locations? Potentially. The FBI says that the attackers were not uh, part of the, the group that tried to get in. Uh, that could have them concerned, or that could mean that uh, they had nothing to do with it. This had no connection whatsoever to last week's shooting, but the FBI, the LAPD, everybody looking at it right now. That's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Who tried to get into a high-rise building in downtown Los Angeles three weeks ago? That's a tough duty. Yeah, it really is. And they're looking over uh, security tapes. They're, they're talking to the folks who were uh, involved in reporting it. You know, initially, a couple of weeks ago, this didn't seem like a whole lot. You get a report of somebody who didn't have the right key card trying to get in and, and looking at the building and taking pictures of the building. And, and the LAPD shows up, takes a report, and says, nothing we can really do. Well, now it has a, a whole new uh, feeling to it, and the FBI taking it very seriously. But again, in the end, may have absolutely nothing to do with it, but the FBI looking into it, trying to figure out if there is a connection. Alex Stone, there's also some reports out there, some presidential comments, presidential candidate comments, saying that there were relatives or neighbors of the two shooters from San Bernardino who they thought they saw something but didn't want to say anything because they were afraid they'd be criticized for racially profiling. Is there any evidence on that side? Well, there are neighbors who now, looking back, uh, and, and this is always the case with the, these types of things, they now say, well, you know, there were little weird things that were going on. And, and we've all had that neighbor that, that something weird goes on, but nothing is illegal to turn them in on. Uh, you know, uh, one neighbor says that uh, she saw Syed Farouk uh, out in his garage quite a bit. and But they thought at the time he liked to work on cars. He grew up taking apart cars, putting them back together. That neighbor is saying, we thought that's what he was doing out there. Other neighbors who say that they were up at, at weird hours of the night, that it seemed like that family was up all night long. Is that enough to call police unless you do a noise complaint and say, you know, I got some weird neighbors, they're up all night long. Uh, other neighbors who now say that they saw Middle Eastern men showing up. Well, you have a, a Pakistani family living next door, they're friends. You might have Middle Eastern men showing up. So it's all these things. A UPS driver who talks about, uh, just a crazy amount of packages that the family would get. Uh, just insane numbers, like 30 or 40 packages a day. He had never seen any one household get anything like that. Weird, but is it illegal? No. Uh, so it's all these uh, strange things that uh, potentially somebody could have said something, but in the moment they thought that's weird, but it's nothing they were going to call the cops about. And the friend who handed him the gun, they don't think he had anything to do with this. Well, we're finding out more now uh, about Enrique Marquez. Uh, he is talking to the FBI, and now we are told by sources that he may be facing gun charges here pretty quickly. Not accomplice charges, not in the murders, but on the gun side of it. Uh, they have been trying to figure out how Syed Farouk and, uh, and Tashfin Malik, how they got their guns and, and how that transfer happened after Enrique Marquez bought the AR-style rifles. Uh, it now appears that Farouk uh, asked Marquez to buy the rifles back in 2011 or 2012 so his name would not be on the file in connection to the guns. So, uh, you know, this may have been a, an illegal purchase that Marquez was buying the guns knowing he was going to hand them over, but at the same time, it seems like I, he may have had no, no knowledge of what was going to go on here. They were good friends. They grew up together. Uh, and it, it could show, potentially, a long time of pre-planning. If, if this goes back to 2011 or 2012 and the request for the guns was for this attack, the FBI believes this may show that the plan was in the works for a long time. Then again, maybe he wanted the guns for some other reason, but because of his name and uh, you know, concern of what that would look like on the file, he didn't want it connected. They don't know. They're trying to figure that out right now. Alex Stone live in Los Angeles. Alex Stone, thanks for checking in. 
You got it. Thanks, McGraw. 625, Big 550, KTRS. St. Mary's is 